Have you ever been on a walk with your dog and they can't seem to stop sniffing every blade of grass, every piece of dirt, every tree? And don't so many of us get really frustrated when our dogs do this? Here's a secret. You cannot train your dog without understanding their nose. I'm actually gonna give you specific strategies to help you understand and manage this behavior effectively and without stifling your dog's natural instincts. If you're committed to understanding your dog and how and why they behave certain ways and you wanna use modern methods, click thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel. Hey, Inertia, can you sniff out a Simpson for me? It actually worked. What I love about Bark is that their team spends all of their brain energy designing products that dogs love. Here's evidence. Look at Homer. Don't, they've got the whole family. See that one's flippy and floppy. Dogs love that. Look at this. She hides her money in her hair. It makes so much sense. Super chewers for dogs who are extremely tough on toys. Take this toy, for example. If your dog can squeak that with their jaws, then you have a super chewer dog. I'm gonna put some treats in here. This is a really great way to keep dogs satisfied when the weather's not great outside or you're a little busy. These are so well done. Having these boxes delivered to you every month, it motivates me to train more, the dogs love it. It's just great for all involved. When you use our special link, you're gonna get double the toys and treats for free. Barkbox.com slash Zach Simpsons and superchewer.com slash Zach Simpsons. Links in the description. Our dog's noses are nothing short of biological marvels. Dogs have an olfactory system that's incredibly complex, far superior to ours. Inside their snout, they have around 300 million olfactory receptors. If you compare that to us, we have around 6 million. This means your dog's sense of smell is up to 50 times more sensitive than ours. And it's not just about the sheer volume of receptors. The part of our dog's brain that analyzes these scents is about 40 times larger than ours too. This allows them to remember a staggering array of scents. They can distinguish individual components in a way that you and I cannot even begin to comprehend. I'm sure some of you are already aware aware of some of the really impressive jobs that dogs are doing with their noses around the world. Search and rescue missions, locating people in the wilderness, disaster zones, and even under snow and avalanche areas. Some dogs are even trained to detect medical conditions like cancer, blood sugar level, and even seizures before they occur. They can do bomb detection, drug enforcement, wildlife conservation, all with their nose, mind you. Arson dogs are trained to detect traces of accelerants, and that's after the fire. This is just the start of what dogs can do with their nose. And she's not just smelling the ground, right? She's smelling the environment, smelling all of these molecules in the air. That's why dogs don't tend to walk in a straight line all the time on these walks and they go back and forth because they're getting information in the atmosphere around them. Let me attempt one more time to put this in perspective for you. Imagine walking into a coffee shop. You might smell some coffee, possibly some pastries, but a dog, they're picking up the scent of the barista who just walked in, the type of beans that are being used, the milk that's just been heated, the customer who just left with their dog, the cleaning products they may have used on the floor that morning, the dough rising in the back, the fresh flowers on the counter, the rain coming off of a passerby's coat. That's what we're dealing with here. And then there's this whole temporal or time aspect to this. We humans, we live in a world that's dominated by visuals, but for dogs, every single scent they smell tells a story. Dogs can actually detect an age of a smell. That allows them to perceive a sequence of events through scent. As the scent ages, the composition of an odor molecule might change. Some compounds might break down while others are going to interact with other substances in the environment. Our dog's sensitive noses really detect these subtle changes. That's what allows them to distinguish between fresh and older smells. This is where it really gets crazy. Beyond this, dogs have a second olfactory system that's optimized to detect pheromones. Those are chemical signals that carry social information among members of the same species. This whole system centers around the vomeronasal organ, or the Jacobson's organ. It's located in the bottom of their nasal passage. In fact, it's right behind their front teeth. Sorry, front teeth. So have you ever seen your dog like take a super smelly item into their mouth? They're not necessarily trying to eat it. They may just be trying to get more of those scent molecules in their vomeronasal organ to help them analyze the scent. You might be wondering if we have one of these vomeronasal organs. We actually do, but it's considered to be vestigial, meaning that it's lost its original function. This is according to the majority of scientists. Here's where it gets even more fascinating, even though we probably can't smell them ourselves. When we humans experience different emotions, our body releases pheromones. And these pheromones contain distinct scents that our dogs can pick up on. Do you realize the implications of this? That means that your dog may actually be able to smell 
your emotions. Not all dogs are equal in this regard. Your dog's anatomy can have a huge impact on how well their sense of smell works for them. For example, some dogs with flattened faces, known as brachycephalic dogs, might have more narrow nasal passages. This can restrict airflow and reduce their ability to detect scents. And that can lead to a less efficient sense of smell for these kinds of dogs. Now, some breeds actually have characteristics that take their olfactory skills to the next level. Take bloodhounds, for example. You know how they have really long ears and and droopy skin. These are thought to trap those scent molecules so that they can process them even more so. Those long ears are thought to sweep the scents towards their nostrils. This is unbelievable. It's not just their nose, it's their whole facial structure that can make each dog's smelling ability unique. Now, you know you're all wondering it right now. Why do dogs sniff each other's butts? It is a good question. When your dog sniffs another dog's rear end, there are doing what we might call a scent handshake. It's odd to us, but it's perfectly polite amongst dogs. The anal glands of dogs secrete a unique scent that basically serve as an identity card. Apparently, these scents can tell you a wealth of information about somebody. Who knew? Through this scent handshake, dogs can detect things like sex, diet, health, and more about other dogs. Certain changes in a dog's scent can tell dogs whether or not a dog has recently gone into heat, or if they're sick. Even a dog's mood can influence that scent. On dogs' feet, they actually have additional scent glands called petal glands. Those could contribute to a really efficient way to leave behind a scent trail. I know this is a lot to take in, but this is going to blow your mind. Did you know that dogs can smell in stereo, each nostril independent? That helps them locate where a particular scent is coming from. It's essentially like a GPS system for your dog, isn't it? We all know what a pee mail is, right? When your dog pees or urinates during a walk, they're doing more than just relieving themselves. They're leaving behind a complex mix of scents that other dogs can smell. Overmarking when one dog pees on top of another dog's pee is a behavior that's not really fully understood, but it could be a way of a dog adding their information to the mix. This really contributes to the whole communal scent conversation that dogs might be having. It is our job to allow our dogs the pleasure of sniffing, though. But sometimes a dog sniffing can really become excessive or disruptive. Let's remember that excessive sniffing is relative amongst dogs. What might seem excessive to us could be perfectly normal for your dog. For example, have you ever seen your dog do something called scent rubbing? They'll smell something on the ground and then rub their body through it to get that smell all over them, seemingly? This is a widespread behavior amongst carnivores, and there are many hypotheses out there trying to explain why they do it, but it still remains somewhat of a mystery as there's no consensus. Incredibly, dogs can also use their sense of smell to navigate their entire environment around them. They create a mental map of the world based on scents. So that helps them navigate familiar routes and find resources. However, if your dog's sniffing behavior is causing safety concerns, like ignoring requests in dangerous situations, or causing really significant interruptions during your walks, it might be time to consider some management and training strategies. When we talk about managing this excessive sniffing, it's not about eliminating this behavior. Instead, you want to find a balance that respects your dog's natural instincts, while also ensuring their safety and your peace of mind. Here's four things you could try. Number one, allocate specific sniffing time during your walks. During this time, allow your dog to sniff to their heart's content. Even throwing some treats in there. Okay, she didn't even see me toss that, so this is gonna be interesting. Find it, there we go. And she'll go right to it. She, she has no problem finding those crumbs. We would have to rely on our vision. We wouldn't be able to smell that as people. Dogs are in a different league. Gives her something to do. This is a way that you can really encourage your dog to sniff in case they're saying, ah, I don't feel, I'd rather drag you down the street right now. This might be an alternative activity that you can do. Toss some treats into some grass. Let them sniff it out really get that nose working. Look how hard she's having to work to get those crumbs right now. And she doesn't mind one bit. In fact, she enjoys the process. Well, you find that their sniff breaks become much shorter when you just give them the outlet, just concede they need to do it. Then they're satisfied. Then they're like, okay, I don't need to melt every time I smell something. With my own dog, Inertia, for example, she really enjoys sniffing. So with her, I like to give her a lot of time. It's really good for her mentally. She enjoys it and it satisfies her. I'll give her several minute long sniff breaks throughout the walk accordingly. This strategy respects your dog's need to sniff while making sure that your walks are manageable and enjoyable for both of you. Two, let's talk about some training. Teach your dog skills like leave it and let's go outside of those intense sniffing experiences. For example, one thing you want to make sure your dog knows is how to do a leave it outside, not just in your living room. Leave it. Look at me. Come. 
Yes. So once your dog can do that exercise, that's when you would teach them to, okay, let's go when they're sniffing after you've given them a fair chance to, of course. Let's go. Let's go is really easy to teach. To teach this, you would basically encourage your dog to come with you every time they naturally are coming with you. With practice, you can use these to redirect their attention when they're overly focused on sniffing. And there's a nuanced difference between leave it and let's go in the context we're talking about. Leave it is about breaking focus and ignoring something specific like with a treat or a scent. Whereas let's go is more about transitioning from one activity to another. Number three, you can try to engage in scent games at home with your dog. I'm gonna place it inches away, find it. The quick way to train this is showing your dog where a particular treat is, put it down on the ground. You start it at inches away. Now I'll do it a couple of feet away, stay. Okay, find it. So I'm releasing her from that stay, telling her, okay, obviously she knows from the context of this training session, the object is to go and get the treat, something she's very happy to do. Now we'll throw a curveball to behind your back. This is super simple. You can just hide okay. little treats around the house and encourage your dog find to find them. And eventually they'll be able to find things that are totally out of okay. sight. Get the nose start to immediately go into overdrive. You see that? And look at that. How about that? Isn't that cool? I've never actually done that exact drill or game with her, so that's the first time that happened. And so it was really cool to see the nose not simply working, but to see her nose like, all right, let me like really kick it into gear here. I'm going to be nonchalant on this one. Look, look how she's not paying attention. See? Find it. Yes, there you go. You can see how this might be as fulfilling to a dog as a 15 minute walk on a rainy day when you can't go outside. It's a fun little game. You can see how this is stimulating for their brain and it's allowing them to have an outlet for those sniffing instincts in a controlled, healthy environment. Number four, teaching a dog to sniff on cue can be a very effective way to manage this behavior. See, we wanna put a word with their sniffing behavior so that we can tell them, sniff right now. Go sniff. This really is as simple as capturing the behavior in day-to-day -day life. So if you're on a walk or your dog is sniffing something, you would just simply say, sniff. Over time, your dog learns what this means given the specific context in which you're saying the word. So you can see how we would do this practically. You say sniff as they're sniffing, let them do it for a while. And then since you've taught them, let's go, you can say, let's go to encourage them to move on. But I find that if you're not giving them the time to actually enjoy the sniffing, this probably won't work out for you. It is very important that you factor this in when you're taking your overall walk. In other words, you don't wanna just say, let's go every single time your dog starts to sniff. Ask yourself if it's fair for them in that moment. You see how this would work to your benefit, right? Over time, your dog starts to identify the word sniff with sniffing and let's go with let's move on. This is a way we can influence their sniffing behavior without suppressing their instincts. That's what we want to avoid, suppressing natural instincts. There are often side effects every time we do that. If your dog's sniffing behavior seems unusual to you, it might be worth considering other causes. Excessive sniffing could also be a sign of anxiety or stress in some instances. Dogs often use sniffing as a calming or displacement behavior too. That's a way of coping with stress or uncertainty for dogs. I mean, think about it like this. Imagine you're at a party where you don't know anybody, it feels a little awkward, you might take out your phone and start looking at it even though you're not that engaged with your phone necessarily, but it makes you feel more secure. Dogs might sniff the ground, the air or objects around them in much the same way. Click thumbs up, make sure you're subscribed, get two times the treats and toys for free when you sign up for a BarkBox or Super Chewer subscription. I'll have links in the description. If you like these videos, you need to be following us on Instagram. We're also on TikTok, Threads, Facebook. Get both of my dog training books and we'll see you in the next video.